Today we are here to learn about the role of molds in the food industry. Now before going into the food production, let us understand what exactly are molds. Molds are nothing but the living organisms that belong to the kingdom of plants, though they do not resemble morphologically to the plants. Why? Because they do not have any root, they do not have any stem, they do not have any leaves and they are devoid of chlorophyll. But still, they are included into the kingdom of plants. We are well aware of the molds when we look at a product in our house when any food or any fruit or vegetable is kept as it is and we find a growth of cottony mass takes place. This is nothing but the growth of the molds over that particular substrate. Now before going further, let us understand what are the properties which gives the characteristic nature to a mold or how do we identify a mold. The first morphological property that we come across is the presence of hyphae. Now these hyphae are nothing but slender, thin, thread-like structures which are not visible to the naked eye if we do not look under the microscope. That means a single hyphae is not visible to us until we look under the microscope. However, when a cluster of hyphae are bunched together, they are visible to the naked eye as a cottony mass and this is now referred to as the mycelium. So if you look at the picture of the mycelium, you can observe very well that this mycelium can be highlighted without any color or it can be colored or it can give you a black cottony mass. The mycelium again can be septate or non-septate. Now septate is when we find the mycelium has got partitions within. We call it a septate mycelium. For example, seen in the case of penicillium and aspergillus. However, when the mycelium does not have any partitions, you are not able to see any partitions inside the mycelium. It's a clear highline structure or the thin thread-like structure appear to be very much transparent and highline. We call it a septate mycelium or non-septate mycelium, which is seen in the case of mucor and rhizopus. A very important characteristic feature that is seen in the case of mold is presence of spores. Now these spores can be of two types. One is called the sexual spore and the other one is called the asexual spore. The sexual spores are the one which are formed due to fertilization. That means when the male and the female gametangia fuse together and there is a formation of a spore, we call it a sexual spore. The different type of sexual spore that we come across in different genus of mold is oospores which are characteristic features in the case of oomycetes. The presence of zygospore, here you can very well see in the picture when the two male and the female gametangia fuse together, there is a formation of a spore and this is called the zygospore which is a characteristic feature of zygomycetes and there may be presence of another type of sexual spore which is ascospore found in the case of ascomycetes and this ascospore is found to be present within a particular sac like structure which is called an ascus. Now I told you about the spores which can be again asexual in nature which is not formed due to fusion of the male and the female. These asexual spores can be of different type. The first one we come across is called sporangiospores. Now these sporangiospores are formed inside the sporangia and therefore this is an asexual spore where the nuclei is haploid. Another type of asexual spore is conidia. The third type of asexual spore that we come across is called arthrospores where we see the mycelium undergoes the process of fragmentation and then give rise to the different type of spores which is called the arthrospores. So all these are asexual spores which gives a characteristic property to different genus of molds. In addition to the spores, there are many specialized structures which gives a characteristic identity to the different molds that are known to us. For example, the presence of stolone. Now stolone is a hyphae which runs parallel to the substrate. Now when this stolone gives rise to the hyphae which is on the upper part or towards the aerial part, this is known as aerial mycelium as you can see over here which ultimately forms sporangia and spores. However, when the hyphae grows downwards 
like the roots these are known as rhizoids so this stolon and rhizoids are nothing but they are the hyphae which is a characteristic feature seen in the case of rhizopus another characteristic structure that is seen is called sclerotia now this sclerotia is formed due to hardening of the mycelium and it can resist the adverse conditions of food scarcity or water scarcity high temperature and therefore the mold is able to survive in adverse condition by the formation of this specialized structure which are called sclerotia the third type of specialized structure is called formation of chlamydospores which is a characteristic property of the genus candida albicans which is commonly known as yeast to us now after studying the properties of the mold let us now know about the life cycle of a mold how does the mold survive or how does a mold reproduces the mold has got two different stages in its life cycle one is the asexual mode and the other one is called the sexual mode when i talk about the asexual mode i am referring to all the spores which are asexual in nature now these asexual spores after germination forms the mycelium and this mycelium bears the spore producing organ which ultimately give rise to the production of the spores so this is an asexual mode of reproduction without the help of any male or the female gametangia however the same mycelium which is formed during the asexual reproduction can fuse or can give rise to male and the female gametangia which ultimately produces a structure which is called heterocaryon that means caryon means nuclei and hetero means different that means a single structure having two different nuclei which fuse together and ultimately we have the formation of a zygote where the formation of a diploid nucleus takes place now this zygote or the nucleus of the zygote undergoes a process called meiosis and as a result the haploid nuclei are being formed so the spore producing organ which are now formed on the hyphae will bear the spores which will have the haploid nuclei now these spores which are formed again germinate and they give rise to the mycelium so in this way a mold can have a vegetative or we say an asexual mode of reproduction as well as a sexual mode of reproduction now there are some factors which affect the growth of the mold there are three important factors rather the first one is the temperature a temperature of 23 to 25 degree celsius is most appropriate for the growth of the mold and as a result we find the cottony mass growing over the food items in our household product when they are left over as it is the second factor is the ph a ph of 5 to 6 that means an acidic ph is mostly favored by the growth of the mold the third factor that is essential is called oxygen basically the fungus are aerobic in nature and they need the presence of oxygen for their growth for their survival and for their reproduction so these are some generalized characteristic features of the mold now let us go into the use of these molds in the food industry so we say that molds are not the one which contaminate our food but they are the one which can be exploited by the human or in the food industry for the manufacture of many food items the first mold i'm going to talk about is penicillium there are many species of penicillium but the generalized structure of penicillium is like a broomstick here you can see in this picture there is presence of phyllites which are swollen structure and at the tip of phyllites there is presence of conidia or the spores the different species of penicillium are used for the manufacture of different type of food items and the most important food product that is produced by the use of the mold penicillium is cheese cheese we all know is being manufactured from milk whenever there is a fermentation of lactic acid now this lactic acid fermentation takes place whenever we add the enzyme called rennet if i go back to the history or just a simple story if i could recollect it says that an arabian merchant was carrying a milk in a pouch which was made by the stomach of the sheep at the nightfall he was able to eat the curd and he was able to drink the whey why is it so because the milk he was carrying was present inside the stomach of a sheep 
and the sac which was made rather with the stomach of the sheep and it has got rennet and this rennet caused the fermentation of the milk as a result the whey and the curd were being produced. In a similar manner when we go in for the production of the cheese the whey and the curd are being produced and after the removal of the whey the curd is being compressed formed into cakes and then it goes for the process of ripening. At this very stage of ripening which is called the mold ripening takes place with the help of the penicillium species. The different type of cheese that are known to us are many. One of the most important cheese that is known to us is Roquefort cheese. Now Roquefort cheese is a patent of France. A French young shepherd once went with his sheep and it started downpouring. And during this downpouring he has to take shelter inside a cave and inside this cave he kept his lunch. After that he forgot to bring his lunch and he went back to his home but after a few days when he returned back and found that the cheese he had kept over there became greenish blue in color and since he was very hungry he has to eat that cheese. To his astonishment he find the cheese seems to be much tastier than what he had for so many days and that gave rise to the cheese which is called the Roquefort cheese. This Roquefort cheese is produced or being ripened with the help of a mold which is called Penicillium Roqueforti as it took place in the village of Roquefort and now it is known as the Roquefort cheese. Here Penicillium grows deep inside the cheese and as a result of this the holes or the eyes are being produced inside the cheese. Due to the fermentation process the carbon dioxide is being produced and as a result of this the carbon dioxide tries to escape out and therefore the formation of the eyes or the holes takes place. The second most important cheese that is known to us is blue cheese. This is nothing but a Roquefort cheese only but the problem is King Charles VI in Roquefort or during uh, the rule of Roquefort he said that no cheese outside should be known as Roquefort cheese and therefore whenever we use the same mold Penicillium Roqueforti the cheese so produced will be known as blue cheese because it gives a blue color appearance to the cheese. Now this blue cheese as you can see over here, here the blue streaks are found inside because the Penicillium Roqueforti grows and therefore known to us or commonly in the world as the blue cheese. Another type of cheese is called Camembert cheese. The camembert cheese is again ripened with the help of a mold or a species of penicillium which is called penicillium camemberti. The difference from the Roquefort cheese is here the penicillium does not grow deep inside the cheese. Rather it grows on the surface only and therefore gives a white or a creamish color appearance not any blue or green color and therefore this cheese is known as camembert cheese. Another genus of mold that is used for the food production is aspergillus. The characteristic feature of the aspergillus is presence of a large vacuole in the center and this vacuole is surrounded by phyllites and these phyllites at the tip bear conidia. So this is a typical characteristic feature which separates it out from the penicillium species. The aspergillus is used for the production of a very important food product that we use in our daily household and that is soya sauce. Soya sauce is being produced from soybean seeds, wheat, salt and water. In the first stage the soybean seeds and the wheat seeds are cracked together, they are mashed and then an inoculum of aspergillus arise is added to this paste. If the solid paste so added with the aspergillus arise give rise to a solid cake like structure which is known as cozy which is again consumed in many countries. However if the cozy is now added with salt water it give rise to a product which is called moromi. Here you can see the formation of the moromi and this moromi if kept for 3 to 4 months give rise to a food product which is called soya sauce when the juice is extracted out and it appears as a brownish black in color. So here you can see the production of soya sauce taking place on a large scale with the help of a mold which is nothing but aspergillus rice. 
Another fermented soybean paste that is being produced in many countries of China and Japan is miso. Here again, the same organism which is called the Aspergillus oryzae is used for the fermentation process of the soybean seeds. Another important genus of mold is Rhizopus, which is used in the food industry. Then this Rhizopus, as you can see, has got a characteristic feature where we find the presence of columella and this columella is being surrounded by a structure which is called sporangium. The sporangium bears all the spores which come out when it bursts off. So this structure is again different from penicillia as well as from aspergillus. Another specialized structure that we found in the case of rhizopus is presence of stolon and presence of rhizoids which I have already discussed as the specialized structure of the molds. The species of rhizopus is used in the production of a food item which is called tem. Now this tem is again produced from the soybean seeds which are being grind together and this is inoculated with the help of the spore suspension of rhizopus oligosporus. This after inoculation with rhizopus and incubated at 31 degrees Celsius for 20 to 24 hours give rise to a product which is called the temp cake. Now this temp can be made from soya bean then it is called a soya bean temp or this temp can be made from the peanut then it is known as a peanut temp. A very important mold which is used in the production of a wine is Botrytis cinerea. This Botrytis cinerea causes the fermentation of the sugar which is present in the grapes and therefore it leads to the formation of a wine which is called the sweet white wine which has got a characteristic flavor and an aroma. There are many other fermented meat products like sausages and meats which can be fermented with the help of different species of penicillium like penicillium chrysogenum, penicillium camembati, the same which is being used for the production of camembert cheese or penicillium nalgiovens, penicillium commune or penicillium also nine. So these are all the useful nature of a mold and that is why mold have been used in the food industry. If I recall back we all use a very common clothing and that is our stone wash jeans. Do we know from where this has been manufactured? The stone wash jeans are nothing but the product of trichoderma fermentation. Trichoderma which is again a mold which causes the degradation of cellulose fibers in the jeans and therefore we have a product which is a stone wash jeans. So molds are not only used in the food industry Molds have got a various application in the human life and therefore whenever a mold grows in our food product, in our household product, do not always assume it as a harmful organism. The molds can be exploited in the industry as a useful organisms. Thank you.